I do have to ask about the AI article before we do a quick fire. As I said, I studied it years ago to hopefully get a job in venture. It worked well for me. When you look back on the piece, it was 2015. So much has changed eight years on. What do you think you got right with the piece? I'm sure you've reflected on it a lot, especially recently. Um, I think that the general principles are pretty much correct. Um, I think... um, you know, the concepts that there's narrow intelligence and general intelligence and, you know, artificial super intelligence and that, and that the implications of the danger of these things is, are intense and that they, uh, AI is probably going to be dangerous, not because it's going to be evil Terminator robots, but because it's going to be super powerful with unintended consequences. Um, I think all of that holds up pretty well. And, 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 and to be clear, very little of that was my own research or principles. I, I, I was, I, I had a few major sources there. I had Nick Bostrom, Ray Kurzweil, and James Barat, and, you know, Ellie Azurkowski, a handful of the, you know, of, of people who basically I synthesized what they were saying. And I tried to tell, you know, dis- distinguish which camps were, were rich and, um, what, we, you know, which is again, part of my job is, is not necessarily to do the deep, deep research and actually come up with the original theories, but to try to summarize what the experts are saying and, and, and try to give a, a bird's eye view of what they're all saying, you know, and what, where is their, where is their agreement and disagreement? What's the best case scenario and worse? So I think it did its job. I'm proud of that piece. I think it holds up pretty well. Obviously, um, it's eight years later. So in a world that's of a, of a technology that's changing so quickly, um, it's, it's, it's a snapshot of what we knew and thought in 2015. Um, is there anything and, that you got wrong in the piece? Knowing what you know now, is there anything you would do differently? Um, it's hard to remember the details. So I'm sure I, I could have probably run it by a, a few real pros. I, I think I've heard some quibbles with some of like the technical specs I put in. Um, I, I think, um, I, I think that, I mean, I know, knowing what I know now, I could also just explain a lot more stuff. You know, I understand it better, but I think I'll, I'll give myself a pass on most of that. I think 2015, it was a pretty, it was, it was about the best I could have done then, um, with the information that I had then, um, with a time, with a time crunch. I was running the other day, listening to you on This Week in Startups with Jason, uh, who we both uh, like very much. You said of its ability, and this is AI's ability, to shape civilization to its core. As you've thought about it over the last eight years, and now seeing it come into fruition more than ever, how do you think about the most dominant ways AI can shape civilization to its core? I mean, civilization is just a bunch of people with a shirt and shared set of understanding of the world and certain set of norms and, and, and processes and systems and institutions that we all sh- share trust in. Um, and that is the, the kind of, uh, those are the support beams of the house we're in. And, um, AI can, is a giant seismic, you know, asteroid landing in, in, in a fairly fragile set of equilibria. And it can just, um, it can very quickly, you know, what if we, no one can trust a video anymore. Every video might've been AI, it might be real people. No one knows, you know, you're listening to, you're seeing a tweet, you're listening to a podcast or a talking head on zoom on a TV interview. And you have no idea if that's a real person or not. I mean, there's a lot of uh, assumptions that we, um, that we all take for granted that, that create a lot of stability. And so when suddenly a lot of the, yeah. I think about this a lot actually. And I think actually like, so number one, verification as a layer becomes one of the most valuable, but I think value accrues to existing media brands because verification becomes more and more challenging. And so the authentic followership that we have becomes more valuable because it becomes more and more difficult to gain new authentic followership. Does that make sense? Yeah. Yeah. But I think that's also, you know, um, yeah, I think, you know, trusted that's what's, you know, part of what concerns me about like so much of the media getting swallowed up by partisanship is like, we really need, you know, well-known media brands or personalities or science institutions that we all can say, well, if they're saying it, it's probably true. Um, that creates, you know, once we have a, sh- you know, that creates a shared reality. And I think that, um, we already see, of course, the fracture of the shared reality because of tribal, you know, um, narrow cast media, 
you know, each telling their own story and social media, uh, creating bubbles of reality. Uh, and I think AI can just accelerate these trends. Um, yeah. The yeah, just just the ability to spread misinformation uh, and to have multiple different sources, you know, of misinformation being um, just, you know, can, you know, AI can create mass panic with a certain kind of fictional news story, and that itself can then cause actual disastrous problems or, you know, someone with their AI can figure out how to shut down the power grid. I mean, there's just a lot of, you don't realize how much, you know, the, if the power grid goes down, we lose the internet. We lose, of course, like all of our major, you know, home functions and everything. Um, and just total chaos. You know, it's like it's civilization seems like it's all robust and works fine because like the power is always on reliably. The water is always coming out of the faucets. Like if you just disrupt certain little key nodes here and there, you can shake these things that we all just think are automatic. Um, so we should always like appreciate that it is, even though it's robust, what the civilization we live in, it's also fragile and um, something, you know, really is some new major new source of power and intelligence just appearing on the scene um, can absolutely like shake some of those fragile aspects. I've been prepping for a show with Vinod Khosla, um, and he's spoken before about his concern around strong AI moving into the hands of the Chinese and deglobalization becoming more and more prevalent with these very segmented, really kind of silos of the world. Do you share his concern around the kind of segmentation of the world, deglobalization, and the ability for the Chinese to have such a stronghold on strong AI? Um, yeah, I mean, as an American who's used to feeling like, um, America is the most powerful country in most ways. So you get really spoiled by that where you just kind of think, um, we're safe because we have more better technology and we have, um, bigger economy and a bigger military, you know, and that's, you know, and no one has the right to feel that way. Americans are very fortunate to have, to have grown up like in a place where you just feel like, um, you know, no other country could like come in here and really do damage here because we, we're America, you know. So, yeah, so I think all Americans should, if they're used to that, they should stop getting used to that and think like, you know, it's, it's maybe not going to be so stable and um, simple as it has been. Um, but as far as like the bigger picture on like um, on um, like the the effect of technology on geopolitics, I'm just uh, I'm not. I haven't done enough deep dive to really have a strong opinion in there that I'm not basically just regurgitating from some smart friend of mine. <laughs> well, you'd be a you'd be a true VC if you were able to do that. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, then then I would tell you your funds should be raised today. I, I do have one <laughs> final one for a quick fine. It's just given the breadth of your research and work and looking ahead, are you optimistic about the future for human civilization, or does climate change, levels of debt, dangers of AI? overcome that optimism yeah it's interesting when it comes to stuff like climate change um those problems i feel optimistic about because i'm like i think that ai if things go well i think we're going to have so many answers in the near future i think we're going to solve so many problems that seem really hard to us right now i think 20 you know these problems won't be a match for 2050s humanity i'm incredibly optimistic about what could happen with health and human lifespan and you know just biotech and, and, and things like that. So um, things that that have stressed me out, like the, pro the problems we currently have, I feel very like optimistic about. The problem is that the same thing that makes me feel optimistic about those, which is AI, um, also makes me wonder whether the, ne the negatives of that thing are going to completely overwhelm the positives. Um, if we don't have a stable society, like none of this matters. And, um, and so I, do think there's like, um, you know, it's like, it's think of it this way. It's like there is a spaceship coming towards us with super intelligent aliens on it. And we're pretty sure that they will know how to solve all of our problems. We also don't know what their deal is going to be, whether they're going to want to hurt us or whether they're going to not care about us either way. And they're going to, um, they're going to just start building stuff and take, you know, destroying our cities and, you know, without any concern for us either way. So would I feel optimistic? It's like, on one hand, yeah, I, I, the problems we have, I'm like, the aliens are going to have answers. That's incredible. We've never had answers to any of these things. On the other hand, I'm like, but the aliens are coming. And that's pretty, like, terrifying. Um, so, um, so yeah, I think, I think it's like, 
I, I think the rational person in me would be like, no, I feel more pessimistic than optimistic, but I also am just kind of an optimistic person. I think a lot of times what comes, what these answers come down to is what's your, what, what do you tend to be optimistic or pessimistic? And if you do one, you tend to be that here. So deep down, I still kind of feel like if I went in a time machine and got out in 2080, I'd be entering an amazing world, not a horrible dystopia.